Frank, I'm seeing a piece of drywall with a big old hole in it. What? Right. But I was mad. <laughs> yeah, it probably punched the wall. Boom! <laughs> right. What well, happened? Yeah, today we're going to show the average homeowner mm -hmm. how to repair holes in drywall. Because, you know, today, from, from 1980 till today, most homes in Hawaii are double wall construction. You know, if you look at the back, you have two by four, 16 inch on center. Yeah, let's see that this way here. Yeah, yeah. and you have drywall. Okay. So, so let's, let's talk about a simple small hole. Let's say you had a picture hanging on the wall and there's a screw and you remove that screw. Yeah. Now, when you go into your home center, there are many types of compound that you can use for patching. I, I, just, I just want you to, like, like for instance, here is what is called vinyl spackling compound. Let me see the label on that. Okay. Try to feel the weight on this. Okay. Oh, now, man. All right, it's heavy, right? That now, was surprising. Here's another product called Fast and Final Lightweight Spackling. Feel the weight on that. Oh, that's like, it's like nothing. another right? third. Right. So this is what is called anti-gravity spackling. <laughs> because imagine this. Now, this is a wall standing yeah, sure. up. You patch a hole. What do you think is going to happen to the spackling? It's going to droop. droop. Now, droop. imagine you're patching a hole in the ceiling. It drips. It's going to fall, right? So, mm -hmm. so what is recommended for the homeowner? You know, naturally, if you're a, you're a drywall expert, you mm -hmm. know, that's your occupation. You can use anything. You know what to do. You but, know how to do it. But if you open this up, you notice the consistency is, is something like frosting on a cake. I'm getting now, hungry, Frank. If I was to go ahead and patch that hole, yeah. it would be a poor job. Because as you can see, when the screw was removed, yeah. there is loose paper. Well, can't you sand it down? And... Right. So, 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 so what is recommended that, that you cut off as much as you can, right? Okay. With a, but you're still not going to get a good patch. So what is recommended? either taking a pencil, a leaded pencil, or even a pen. Yeah. And what you want to do is push in on that puka. Yeah. So what you're doing is you're recessing the paper into the drywall. Then, okay. when you take your, your putty knife and yeah. you, you take your spackling, you get a nice, even fill. Okay. okay. And, and because this is the anti-gravity type, you're not going to get any drooping. When that hardens, it hardens like a rock. Is there often paint or other, you know, uh, like a, like a, I'm thinking wallpaper that that adds to the problem, right? Oh, of course, yeah. If you have wallpaper, then you know, you gotta <laughs> you gotta find the same wallpaper and match it. So if you wallpaper out, save <laughs> right. some. So you can see small holes as mm -hmm. long as there's a back. But look, when you have a hole like this, yeah, if oh I was man. if I was to take spackling and try to fill that hole, you know what would happen. Yeah, well, it would come right through. It would just go right through. So, you know, I've actually seen homeowners take newspaper, crumble it up, shove it into their walls. Yeah. You know, not, not, not a good idea. Yeah. So, so again, what, what is made, you know, you go to your home centers, they do sell patches. You know, it's like a metal screen yeah. with a stick on, and you just take it off and you can put it right over. Yeah. And then you put your joint compound. You know, here's what it's called, joint compound. Yeah. And it is applied with a wide putty knife, because you have to do at least a 10 inch surface, and then it'll be sanded. This right? reminds me of the stuff you used to, to fix screens. It's similar. It's similar, but it's just more heavy right. duty to right. be able to hold the spackle. Right. right, but you know, a lot of times people don't want to spend money. Mm -hmm. You know, they're... <laughs> they're broke, is yeah. the word you're searching and, for, Frank. And, and there, are, there is a simple technique that'll cost you nothing. What's what that? I recommend, yeah. you just take a piece of cardboard, Okay, so I'm gonna show you this. And yeah. you cut it a little bit bigger than the puka. <laughs> Good you idea. take a toothpick, yeah. you tie a string around it. You know, like I, had yeah. a, I had it tied over here, but it came yeah, off. There you go. Okay, then what you wanna do is insert that toothpick into the cardboard, okay. turn it so you have, so, so you can, so it can be pushed against. So it locks in. Right, right. then yeah. you're gonna take white glue okay. and just, oh, oh. just just put a bead of glue around the edge of the cardboard uh-huh you're gonna bend it put oh, it into no. the puka and then you're gonna push push it towards you you just and pull then, it basically. right and then what you do is you could just take uh you know like my i have a pen here yeah you could just take a pen okay wrap it around Put it like this, and you're gonna let it dry for about half an hour, right? So all you do is put a couple of pieces of tape. Oh, such as oh this. yeah, and you use, the, is that a, you need the painter's tape? This is the right. one that doesn't leave residue? Yeah, well, and then once this dries, you have a okay. backing, and you can patch. So here I have one that I have previously patched, yeah. just so you get, an, you get an idea 
of what we're talking about. Oh, that. You can see the cardboard yeah. and the patch. And if someone is stuck inside <laughs> your wall, you just, right out, you can push <laughs> out a little bit. Correct. But yeah. if the hole is so big, I mean, you know, yeah. naturally, yeah, you can have a giant hole. In that case, this method is not recommended. What is recommended that you actually cut. So, so in other words, you would, you would, you would take you know, uh, like uh, uh, something like yeah. larger than a hole, you would make a trace. Okay. And then you would cut a piece that's the same size, right? Yeah. And this, and a cleat. Well, how did you get those pieces of wood in right. there? What, the what I did, I stuck my hand inside and I oh, put the cleat. Oh, I see. Okay, but sometimes people, you know, they, they don't want to go out, then you, you know, because you have to go out after this piece is inserted. Yeah, then you have to sure. go put your tape. And it's not, right. it's not perfectly <laughs> flush, so right. you've got to fill those gaps. Right, but I'm going to teach you real quick the, the yeah. tic tac toe method. <laughs> this is what they call the tic tac. If you look at yeah, this, you yeah, notice sure. I drew lines. So basically, what I did was I measured what was the size of that hole. Mm -hmm. Then <clears throat> you take a straight edge, and basically, all you're going to do is score. On the back, you're going to be scoring yeah. about two, three times, all the way around, right? right? And then all you're going to be doing is snapping that, and then you're going to peel off the drip board. So basically, when you've done that, this is what you've accomplished. Oh no! The paper will yeah. stay. The drywall will come off. Oh, and then so you leave the paper. You is leave it the difficult paper. To, is it difficult to pull this? No, off? very easy. And oh, then okay. this piece just inserts right into it. Yeah. Then you put your joint compound and patch the wall. Easy. So that, that eliminates the need of buying the patch or using yeah. the tape. Oh, that's a good idea, Frank. You are number one. Tic-tac-toe. Tic-tac-toe, bro. Saving so with that, money. you can see, very yeah. easy to patch holes in drywall. And all available at City All Mill. available at City Mill. Right on. Thank you, bro. <laughs> Me.